Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. You might like to, you might consider uh, checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at PeterJRay.com. And that's that's too many Peter J. Rays. It's very redundant. <laughs> okay. Today's topic is the 1928 Cleveland Tigers Negro National League baseball season. The Cleveland Tigers were the fifth Negro League team in Cleveland, following the Teach Stars, Browns, Elites, and Hornets. And the uh, the Tigers, the Cleveland Tigers, in 1928 were playing in the Negro National League. Home games in Cleveland were played at Luna Park at Woodhill Road, East 110th Street, Woodland Avenue, and Ingersoll Avenue in Cleveland. Cleveland Tigers finished in 7th place. They had a tough year with a record of 20 and 59, winning percentage of 253, 37 games out of first. The first place team was the St. Louis Stars, who were 61 and 26, winning percentage of 701, really good. Second place, the Kansas City Monarchs, 50 and 29. Third place, the Detroit Stars, 53 and 36. Fourth place, the Chicago American Giants. 50 feet, 55 and 38. Fifth place, the Birmingham Black Barons, 46 and 51. Sixth place, the Memphis Red Sox, 33 and 51. Seventh place, the Cleveland Tigers, 20 and 59. Eighth and last place, the Cuban Stars West, who are 13 and 41. Now, Luna Park in Cleveland uh, had a large capacity uh, for fans and had improved amenities. There were five streetcar lines that ran there. 26,000 seats, so they could really handle a lot of folks. There were more restrooms for the men and women, and there were three clubhouses and parking for 2,000. This was an amusement park with roller coasters, a Ferris wheel, and so forth that operated between 1905 and 1929. The Cleveland Panthers in the AFL, American Football League, played there, along with the Cleveland Bulldogs in the NFL, Cleveland Stars in 1932, the Cleveland Giants of the Negro Leagues in 1933, and the Cleveland Red Sox, also in the Negro Leagues in 1934. And uh, other National League or Negro League teams all played there as well. Now, the owner for the Cleveland Tigers in 1928 was M.C. Barkin. He was a white guy. He paid $10,000 for the team. Barkin was a local hardware merchant. And he himself had played in, in the Class A minor leagues as a catcher when he was a young man. M.C. Barkin. Now, the general manager for the Tigers the first half of the season was S.M. Terrell. And the second half, Lem Williams, who was involved with the construction of Tate Field slash Hooper Field, where earlier uh, Cleveland Negro League teams had played. He was the captain of the New York Cuban Giants for 16 years and played for the on uh, played for the African American All Star team that performed for the King and Queen of England over in England. He also went to Hiram College and was a policeman in Painesville, Ohio. After he retired from the Negro Leagues, uh, Lem Williams. Now the manager. There were three managers actually during the season. Frank Duncan was the first manager. He was the he was also a third baseman and a bench player as a manager. Duncan's record was 4-20. and 20. He, he only batted seven times, did not have a hit in seven games. Duncan played for the Cleveland Elites in 1926, the Cleveland Hornets in 1927, and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928, and this was the end of his Negro League baseball career, Frank Duncan. Now, Harry Jeffries was the se- second manager. His record was 7-18. and 18. He was the starting third baseman. For the Tigers, and he had a fine year. He hit 359, 42 hits, 22 runs scored, 10 doubles, 2 triples, a home run, 14 RBIs, 6 stolen bases, and 6 base on balls in 32 games. Jeffries played for the Cleveland Tate Stars in 1923, the Cleveland Browns in 1924, and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. His Negro League baseball career continued until 1934. Harry Jeffries. Sam Crawford was the third and final manager for the Tigers. His record was 9 and 21. He played some second base as a bench player. Crawford batted 217 with 5 hits and 23 at bats. He scored 2 runs, had 2 RBIs, 1 stolen base, 1 walk in 12 games. During his career, he was a pitcher, second baseman, outfielder, manager and coach. And he was 
played or managed the New York Black Sox, Brooklyn Royal Giants, Chicago Giants, Chicago American Giants, the Chicago Union Giants, Detroit Stars, Kansas City Monarchs, Cleveland Tate Stars, St. Louis Stars, Birmingham Black Barons, Cleveland Tigers, Chicago Columbia Giants, Coles American Giants, and the Indianapolis Athletics between 1910 and 1938. One of the best pitchers in black baseball in the early 1910s. 1912 with Chicago Giants, he had two no-hitters. Reportedly, he had two no-hitters in one day and no walks. 1925 in the National... Uh, Negro National League. He won a World Series title with the Chicago American Giants. He's also a manager of the Havana Red Sox in Cuba in 1917. In 1935, he managed the Kansas City Monarchs. Crawford was born in 1892 in Dallas, Texas. As a manager, he was 176 and 284 for a winning percentage of 383. During his career as a pitcher, he was 63 and 60 with an ERA of 4.00, 174 games, 127 starts, 84 complete games, eight, seven shutouts, and eight saves, 1,081 and a third innings pitched, and 536 strikeouts. As a hitter, he batted 194 with 97 hits, 10 doubles, two triples, a home run, 33 RBIs, 11 stolen bases. 30 walks in 216 games. Sam Crawford. Epi Hamilton was the catcher for the Tigers. He batted 327 with 32 hits and 98 at bats. He scored seven runs, had four doubles, 10 RBIs, three walks in 28 games. Hamilton played for the Memphis Red Sox, the Birmingham Black Barons, the Cleveland Tigers, and Washington Pilots between 1923 and 1937. He was born in 1900 in Missouri, and for his career, he batted 309 with 112 hits, 39 runs, 12 doubles, 5 triples, a home run, 49 RBIs, 3 stolen bases, 14 walks in 129 games. Epi Hamilton. Willie Bobo was the first baseman. Bobo batted 193 with 11 hits and 57 at bats. Scored 2 runs, had 2 doubles, a triple, 5 RBIs, 3 walks in 17 games. Bobo played for the All Nations, the Kansas City Monarchs, the St. Louis Stars, Nashville Elite Giants, and Cleveland Tigers between 1923 and 1930. He was a slugger and a good fielder, usually batted third in the lineup. He hit 344 in 1926. Bobo had an untimely death in 1930. He played in the California Winter League and traveled to Tijuana, Mexico and, and consumed some wood alcohol died the next day in the United States at age 29. He was born in 1902 in Tennessee. For his career, Bobo batted 331 with 232 hits, 142 runs, 44 doubles, 13 triples, two, two strikeouts, uh, 20 RBIs, and 152 games, and 22 stolen bases, 87 walks, and a and 194 games, so 152 RBIs, rather. 20 home runs and 152 RBIs. Willie Bobo. Edward Milton was the second baseman. Milton batted 354 with 70 hits and 198 at-bats. He scored 37 runs, had six doubles, 13 triples, seven home runs, 42 RBIs, five stolen bases, eight walks in 57 games. And Milton played for the Cleveland Elites in 1926, the Cleveland Hornets in 1927, and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. Edward Milton. Pete Willett was the shortstop. Willett batted 291 with 23 hits and 79 at-bats. He scored six runs, had four doubles, a triple, a home run, eight RBIs, two walks in 25 games. Willett played for the Cleveland Browns in 1924 in the Negro Leagues, the Cleveland Tigers in 1928, and this was the end of his Negro League baseball career. Pete Willett. Tack Summers was in left field. Summers batted 258 with 57 hits and 221 at-bats. He scored 36 runs, had seven doubles, three triples, 17 RBIs, three stolen bases, 17 walks in 58 games. Summers played for the Cleveland Browns in 1924, the Cleveland Elites in 1926, the Cleveland Hornets in 1927, and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. His Negro League baseball career continued until 1930. Tax Summers. Ernest Duff was the center fielder. Duff batted 326 with 58 hits and 178 at-bats. He scored 36 runs, had 15 doubles, a triple, two home runs, 24 RBIs, six stolen bases, seven walks in 47 games, and Duff played for the Cleveland Elites in 1926, the Cleveland Hornets in 1927, 
and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. <coughs> His Negro League baseball career continued until 1932. Ernest Duff. Frank Stevens was the right fielder. Stevens batted 329 with 27 hits and 82 at-bats. He scored 10 runs, had 8 doubles, 2 triples, 15 RBIs, 4 walks in 35 games. He was also a pitcher, and, and uh, his record was 3-6 and six with an ERA of 6.17. 15 games, 9 starts, 4 complete games, 81 and 2 thirds innings pitched, and 42 strikeouts. Steven Stevens played for the Cleveland Hornets in 1927 and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. His Negro League baseball career continued until 1929. Frank Stevens. Now, the bench <coughs> players included Saul Davis, who played some second base. He batted 288 with 47 hits and 163 at bats. He scored 24 runs, had 11 doubles, a triple, a home run, 21 RBIs, 8 stolen bases, 6 walks, and 42 games. They called him Saul and also rare back. During his career, he was a shortstop, third base, second baseman, and manager. He played for the Houston Black Buffaloes, the Columbus Buckeyes, Birmingham Black Barons, Cleveland Tigers, Memphis Red Sox, Chicago American Giants, the Black House of David, Jack Johnson All-Stars. That was uh, associated with the ex-heavyweight boxing champion, Jack Johnson. The Gilkerson Union Giants, the Chicago Giants, the Detroit Stars, and the Zulu Grass Skirts between 1918 and 1937. He was born in 1901 in Bayou, Louisiana. Davis had a strong arm, above average glove. He was a, he was a punch hitter, a mediocre batting average. He was a rough player. During the rough play of his era, he wore sh- shin guards to protect himself from the filed spikes of, of base runners. After he retired, he settled in the Dakotas. He was born... Well, other sources say he was born in, in Monticello, Arkansas, and died in 1994 in Minot, North Dakota, at age 92. For his career, he batted 289 with 98 hits and 43 runs. He scored, and he had 14 doubles, two triples, three home runs, 43 RBIs, 15 stolen bases, 11 walks in 99 games. Saul Davis. Oroville Singer played some center field. He batted 347 with 51 hits and 147 at bats. Scored 18 runs, had nine doubles, three triples, a home run, 23 RBIs, five stolen bases, three walks in 38 games. Singer played for the Cleveland Browns in 1924, Cleveland Tigers in 1928, the Cleveland Cubs in 1931, and the Cleveland Stars in 1932. Oroville Singer. Heavy Johnson played some right field. They also they called him Oscar, I think that, or that was his given name. They called him Heavy. He batted 387 with 29 hits and 75 at bats. He scored 16 runs, had three doubles, three triples, a home run, 15 RBIs, five walks in 20 games. And he also did a little pitching. He had no decisions and an ERA of 0.00, one game, three innings pitched, and two strikeouts. He also, during his career, was an outfielder, catcher, and second baseman playing for the St. Louis Giants, the Kansas City Monarchs, Baltimore Black Sox, Harrisburg Giants, Cleveland Tigers, Memphis Red Sox, and and the 25th Infantry Wreckers between 1916 and 1932. He was a heavy player with a heavy bat, a power hitter in the 1920s. Johnson weighed 250 pounds. That's why they called him heavy. In 1922, he hit 389 with the Kansas City Monarchs. 1923 was his best year when he hit 380 with 18 home runs in 46 games. In 1940, he reportedly hit 60 home runs and won a World Series title with the Kansas City Monarchs. He also hit 411. He was an unpolished fielder. In the World Series, he caught Hilldale's George Johnson's long, long drive against the wall and threw out George Carr at the plate. 1925 and 1926, he hit 345 and 337 respectively for the Baltimore Black Sox. He once pinch hit a home run with a fungo bat after being roused from, from sleep on the bench. He hit 337 for his career. Johnson was born in 1895 in Atchison, Atchison Kansas, and died in 1960 in Cleveland, Ohio at age 65. For his, for his career, he batted 369 with 611 hits, 313 runs, 111 doubles, 49 triples, 56 home runs, 408 RBIs, 42 stolen bases, 
142 walks in 458 games. Heavy Johnson. Ted Stockard played some shortstop. Stockard batted 276 with 21 hits and 76 at bats. He scored three runs, had two doubles, a triple, 12 RBIs, three walks in 19 games. Stockard played for the Cleveland Hornets in 1927 and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928, and this was the end of his Negro League baseball career. Ted Stockard. Charlie Woolridge played some first base. He batted 227 with 10 hits and 44 at bats. He scored two runs, had two RBIs, eight walks in 16 games. Woolridge played for the Cleveland Elites in 1926, the Cleveland Tigers in 1928, and this was the end of his Negro League baseball career. Charlie Woolridge. John Wesley Johnson played some first base. He batted 170 with eight hits and 47 at bats. He scored four runs, had two doubles, two RBIs, four walks, and 17 games. He also did some pitching. He had no decisions and an ERA of 7.88. Four games, 16 innings pitched, and eight strikeouts. Johnson played for the Cleveland Tate Stars in 1922, the Cleveland Browns in 1924, Cleveland Elites in 1926, the Cleveland Hornets in 1927, and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. And this was the end of his Negro League baseball career. John Wesley Johnson. George Dixon was a spare catcher. Dixon batted 222 with 10 hits and 45 at bats. He scored five runs, had, had, a, had a double, three RBIs, six walks in 19 games. Dixon played for the Cleveland Elites in 1926, Cleveland Hornets in 1927, Cleveland Tigers in 1928, the Cleveland Cubs in 1931, and the Cleveland Giants in 1933. George Dixon. Charles Zomphie played some second base. He batted 205 with nine hits and 44 at bats. He scored four runs, had a double, a triple, four RBIs, six walks in 13 games. Zomphie played for the Cleveland Elites in 1926, Cleveland Hornets in 1927, Cleveland Tigers in 1928, and the Cleveland Cubs in 1931. Charles Zomphie. Perry Hall played some second base. Hall batted 324 with 12 hits and 37 at bats. He scored four runs, had a double, a triple, a home run, six RBIs, a walk in 10 games. Hall played for the St. Louis Giants, Detroit Stars, Milwaukee Bears, Memphis Red Sox, Cleveland Tigers, Birmingham Black Barons, Gilkerson's Union Giants, Chicago Columbia Giants, Indianapolis Athletics, and Chicago Giants between 1921 and 1945. He also played third base, outfielder, outfield, and pitcher. He was a good hitter with some power, had good speed, and was a good base stealer. Third base was his favorite position. Came from a family of 19 children and ran away from home at age 14 to live with an older brother in Atlanta, Georgia. At age 16, he was in a Sunday school league. In 1932, he stepped in a gopher hole and popped his knee and was out for the rest of the season. He drove a cab in the offseason. Hall, Hall was born in 1898 and Hogansville, Georgia, and died in 1993 in Chicago, Illinois, at age 94. For his career, he batted 275 with 30 hits, 12 runs, 4 doubles, a triple, a home run, 15 RBIs, 2 stolen bases, 5 walks, and 44 games. And I'm sure those are incomplete statistics. Perry Hall. Bobby Williams played some shortstop. He batted 258 with 8 hits and 11, 31 at bats, scored 2 runs, had 3 RBIs, 2 walks, and 9 games. During his career, he played shortstop, second base, third base, outfield, and was a manager. Williams played for the Dayton Giants, Chicago American Giants, Indianapolis ABCs, Homestead Grays, Cleveland Tigers, Atlantic City Bacharach Giants, the Pittsburgh Crawfords, Columbus Bluebirds, Akron Tyrites, Cleveland Giants, and Cleveland Red Sox between 1917 and 1934. He was five foot five and born in 1895 in New Orleans, Louisiana, and died in 1978 at age 83. Williams was a slick fielder who could play. Died in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He could play any infield position, was a weak hitter, a good bunter, had exceptional speed. He went to Xavier, Xavier College in New Orleans and had a scrappy style of play. He, he, liked, to slide, he liked the head first slide uh, in his made a headfirst slide in his first bunt attempt. He was in the U.S. Army in the First World War in the 803rd Pioneer Infantry. For his career, he batted 217 with 433 hits, 271 runs, 53 doubles, 20 triples, 3 home runs, 221 RBIs, 67 stolen bases, 
159 walks in 576 games. Bobby Williams. Chancellor Ed- Edwards played some catcher. He was, was a spare catcher. He batted 107 with three hits and 28 at-bats. He scored a run, had an RBI, a walk in 10 games. They called him Jack and Pep, and his, his Negro League baseball career was just with the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. Chancellor Edwards, a player who was only, no, only known as, was known as Goldie, no last name recorded, played some first base. He batted 105 with two hits and 19 at-bats. Scored three runs, had a double, two RBIs, two stolen bases, a walk in seven games. Goldie played for the Indianapolis ABCs, the Cleveland Elites, Cleveland Hornets, Cleveland Tigers between 1919 and 1928. He was a reserve first baseman, a guy named Goldie. Fred Dewitt played some first base. He batted 067 with one hit and 15 at bats. Scored a run, had an RBI, two walks in six games. During his career, he played third base, second base, and first plate base. Playing for the Dayton Giants, Indianapolis ABCs, the Columbus Buckeyes, Toledo Tigers, Dayton Marcos, and Cleveland Tigers. Between 1917 and 1928, this was the end of his Negro, Negro League baseball career. He was a light, light-hitting infielder, born in 1900, and died in 1962 in Chicago, Illinois, at age 61. Went to Wilberforce University in Wilberforce, Ohio. Fred Dewitt. John Barnes was another spare catcher. Barnes batted 12 times, did not have a hit. Scored two runs, had a walk in six games. Barnes played for the Cleveland Tate Stars in 1922 and 1923. The Cleveland Browns in 1924. The Cleveland Elites in 1926. The Cleveland Hornets in 1927. And the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. His Negro League baseball career continued until 1930. John Barnes. A. Owens played some shortstop. Owens batted 429 with three hits and seven at bats. He had a walk in five games. And his Negro League baseball career was just with the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. A. Owens. Chester Blanchard was a played some third base. He batted 714. Holy cow. Five hits and seven at bats. He scored a run, had an RBI in three games. Blanchard played shortstop, second base, left field, and pitcher during his career. He played for the Dayton Marcos and Cleveland Tigers between 1926 and 1933. He was a light-hitting infielder and and very versatile. He was born in 1903 in Smithfield, Ohio, and died in 1996 in Dayton, Ohio, at age 93. Chester Blanchard. James Womack played some first base. He batted 200 with one hit and five at-bats. Scored a run, had an RBI in one game. During his career, he played first base, third base, second base, and outfield. Womack played for the Richmond Giants, Cleveland Tigers, Indianapolis ABCs, the Cuban Stars West, Atlantic City Baccarat Giants, the Columbus Turfs, Columbus Bluebirds, and the Baltimore Black Sox. Between 1928 and 1933, he usually batted in the lower half of the order. For his career, he batted 297 with 11 hits, 4 runs, Two triples, six RBIs, two walks in 13 games, and those are definitely incomplete statistics. James Womack. It's a player named Turner who played some first base. He had a batting average of 1,000. He batted uh, two hits and two at-bats, scored a run, had an RBI in one game. Turner played for the Cleveland Tigers and Kansas City Monarchs between 1928 and 1930. A guy named Turner. It's a guy named Powell who batted once, did not have a hit in one game. He uh, played for the Cleveland Tigers and Memphis Red Sox between 1928 and 1931. A guy named Powell. Now the pitching staff, the ace pitcher was Nelson Dean, who was 5-15 and with an ERA of 4.14. 26 games, 18 starts, 10 complete games, a shutout, and a save at 143 in a third inning, innings pitched and 70 strikeouts. Dean batted 058 with three hits and 52 at bats. He scored four runs, had an RBI, and four walks. Dean played for the Cleveland Hornets in 1927, the Cleveland Tigers in 1928, and the Cleveland Stars in 1932. In September, in an exhibition game, he pitched a perfect game against a Triple A All Star team. Imagine, sounds like that was a white team. Nelson Dean. Goose Curry was another starting pitcher. They called him Homer. Or his given name was Homer. They called him Goose. His pitching record was 7-10 and 10 with an ERA of 4.66. 23 games, 15 starts, 6 complete games, 
125 and two-thirds innings pitched and 36 strikeouts. Curry batted 352 with 38 hits and a 108 at-bats. Scored 15 runs, had six doubles, two triples, two home runs, 12 RBIs, four, and four walks. During his career, he played left field, right field, pitcher, second base, and was a manager. Curry played for the Cleveland Tigers, Memphis Red Sox, Monroe Monarchs, Nashville Elite Giants, Columbus Elite Giants, Washington Elite Giants, Indianapolis ABCs, the New York Black Yankees, Baltimore Elite Giants, Philadelphia Stars, Newark Eagles, Louisville Black Colonels, and Birmingham Black Barons between 1928 and 1955. Wow, what a career. He was born in 1905 in Mexico. Texas and died in 1974 in Memphis, Tennessee at age 68. He was a good contact hitter with good speed. He was often a, a during his career, he was a player manager, according to uh, Negro League baseball lore, against Louis Tiant Sr., the father of Louis Tiant, who became the, a star for the Cleveland Indians and Boston Red Sox. He, he struck out uh, against Louis Tiant Sr., he struck him out on a pickoff Pickoff throw to first base. He started to move. Well, that sounds kind of strange. He started the pitching move. Uh, anyway, so he faced Louis Tiant Sr. in an unusual situation. During his career, he batted 295 with 433 hits, three, 334 runs, 63 doubles, 27 triples, 15 home runs, 211 RBIs, 29 st- stolen bases, 264 walks, and 472 games. Oh, he struck out. He struck out Louis Tiant. In other words, uh, he th- he threw a pickoff throw to first, and Tiant uh, swung supposedly and uh, <laughs> struck out. And for his career, uh, Curry was twelve and eighteen with an ERA of 4.94, 49 games, twenty seven starts, twelve complete games, a shutout, a save, two hundred and fifty three innings pitched, and eighty one strikeouts. Goose Curry. William Ross was another pitcher. Ross was 2 and 5 with an ERA of 3.45. 10 games, 8 starts, 5 complete games, 2 saves, 57 and a third innings pitched, and 14 strikeouts. Ross batted 357 with 10 hits and 28 at bats. Scored 4 runs, had a double, a triple, 4 RBIs, 2 walks, and 14 games. Ross played for the Cleveland Browns in 1924, Cleveland Elites in 1926. Cleveland Hornets in 1927, and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. This was the end of his time in Cleveland. He continued in the Negro Leagues until 1930. William Ross. Squire Moore, also known as Square Moore, was 1-3 with an ERA of 9.58. Six games, four starts, two complete games, 20 and two-thirds innings pitched, and six, six strikeouts. He batted 12 times, did not have a hit in seven games. Moore, Played for the Cleveland Tate Stars in 1922, Cleveland Elites in 1926, the Cleveland Hornets in 1927, and the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. And this was the end of his Negro League baseball career. Squire Moore. Tom Jackson was 0-1 with an ERA of 8.44. Five games, three starts, 10 and two-thirds innings pitched, and six strikeouts. He batted 200 with one hit and five at-bats, scored two runs in five games. Jackson played for the St. Louis Stars, Memphis Red Sox, Cleveland Tigers, Nashville Elite Giants, and, and Louisville White Sox. Between 1924 and 1931, Tom Jackson. George Boggs was another pitcher. He had no decisions in an ERA of 4.05. Two games, one start, six and two-thirds innings pitched, and one strikeout. Boggs batted 333 with one hit and three at-bats, one walk and three games. He was a pitcher and an outfielder. He played for the Detroit Stars, Milwaukee Bears, Dayton Marcos, Cleveland Tigers, and Baltimore Black Sox between 1923 and 1934. He was born in 1899 in Virginia. For his career, he was 2-15 as a pitcher with an ERA of 5.94, 29 games, 21 starts, 7 complete games, a save, 136 and a third innings pitched, and 55 strikeouts. As a hitter, he batted 128 with 10 hits, Four runs scored, two doubles, six RBIs, four base on balls in 41 games. George Boggs. Bill Williams had had a record of 0-1 with an ERA of 3.86. One game, one start, two and a third innings pitched, and one strikeout. 
batted once and did not have a hit, and his Negro League baseball career was just with the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. Bill Williams. Johnny Bob Dixon was a relief pitcher. He had a record of 0-3 with an ERA of 12.13. Gosh, 11 games, two starts, a complete game, a save, and 39 in the third innings pitched and 14 strikeouts. Dixon batted 235 with four hits and 17 at bats. He scored a run, had a double, an RBI, and a walk. During his career, he was a pitcher and a shortstop. He played for the Detroit Stars, Cleveland Tigers, Chicago American Giants, Indianapolis ABCs, the Cuban Stars, Cleveland Giants, and Cleveland Red Sox between 1926 and 1934. He was born in 1899 and died in 1985 in Maslin, Ohio in 1985, at age 85. For his career, he was 0-6 with an ERA of 7.85, 22 games, 6 starts, 3 complete games, and a save. 96 in the third innings pitched and 32 strikeouts. For his career, he batted 2-11 with 8 hits, 2 runs scored, a double, an RBI, 3 walks, and 23 games. And again, those are definitely incomplete statistics. Johnny Bob Dixon. Tom Cox. They called him Lefty, had no decisions in an ERA of 9.00. Two games, five innings pitched, and four strikeouts. Batted twice and did not have a hit. Cox played for the Cleveland Tigers, the New York Lincoln Giants, and the Cleveland Cubs between 1928 and 1932. Tom Cox, pitcher named Kirby, had no decisions in an ERA of 8.31. One game, four and a third innings pitched. And as a hitter, he batted 667 with two hits and three at bats and scored two runs. And his Negro League baseball career was just with the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. A guy named Kirby. And finally, Owen Smalding uh, was, had no decisions in an ERA of 13.50, one game, and two thirds and two thirds innings pitched. He batted once, or he had no at bats in one game. Smalding played for the Kansas City Monarchs, Cleveland Tigers, Chicago American Giants, the Birmingham and the Birmingham Black Barons between 1927 and 1928. He was born in 1896 in Wichita Falls, Texas, and died in 1961 in Chicago, Illinois, at age 65. For his career, he was two and three with an ERA of 5.36, nine games, eight starts, three complete games, four, 47 innings pitched, and 13 strikeouts. And as a hitter, he batted 200 with four hits, a run, a double, an RBI, and nine games. Owen Smalding. Now, in 1928 in the Negro Leagues, the best hitter was Willie Wells for the St. Louis Stars. And the best pitcher was Ted Trent, for the Saint, also with the St. Louis Stars. And Satchel Page was ranked as the second best pitcher. Now, the Negro League Championship Series... There was, uh, no, uh, there was no World Series because the Eastern League folded. And so the, in, the, uh, Negro, in the Negro National League Championship Series, the St. Louis Stars defeated the Chicago American Giants five games to four. So that's the story of the 1928 Cleveland Tigers. They had kind of a tough year, but they were playing for Cleveland. They were our team. God bless all the guys who played for the Cleveland Tigers in 1928. And everyone else associated with the team, including the fans, especially the Civil War veterans, Spanish-American War veterans, and First World War veterans. Captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, Terminal Tower Power, fans of the Free Stamp Statue and the Fountain of Eternal Life, Severance Hall stalwarts, Euclid Avenue Electricity, Cleveland Museum of Art enthusiasts, First Energy Stadium friends, Progressive Field Progressive Field Pals, Quicken Loans Arena Enthusiasts, Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Monsters, and Gladiators Rule, Cleveland, City of Champions. Cleveland is the best location in the nation on the north coast of America. New York is the Big Apple. Cleveland is a plum. Before you know it, it'll be opening day 2019. Go Tribe. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You might consider going to the website, my website and making a donation. Thank you so much. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.